Ian, tell us a little about your a little bit about your background and uh, how you ended up at the Exeter Chiefs. Uh, so, uh, well, obviously, I'm from Ulster originally. Like you know, uh, grew up sort of just playing schools rugby, club club rugby there. Played for Queen's University in the All Ireland League for a couple of years, and then got got picked up by Ulster. Sort of quite luckily, really, because there's there's not. You know, unless you go straight into academy after school these days, you know, it's quite hard to get picked up. But I was lucky I got picked up at university, got in the Ulster Academy and then played for Ulster for four years, um, which was fantastic. Obviously, play for your home province is something, you know, you always want to do. It's lucky as well. I, I got a couple of Irish caps during that, albeit it was when the whole Ireland was picked in the Lions tour in 2009. That's how old I am, we're still playing like, but uh, I went to USA and Canada with the the Irish senior tour was that year. So I got a couple of caps for Ireland then. But it was never really, you know, I nailed on starter at Ulster and... uh, you know, the opportunities obviously uh, came across the water and I didn't really know much about Exeter, but I got, got picked up by them uh, and it turned out to be a really brilliant move. Yeah, you haven't looked back. They've been qu- quite a success story, Exeter, you know, not not just in English rugby, but one of, one of the success, one of the real success stories of, of the World Club game, you know, if you... You look back to uh, what was twenty only about twenty three or four years ago. They were in the fourth tier of English rugby. You know, they they uh, even they made it into the English Premiership for the first time in um, twenty twenty ten. And uh, since th- since then, you've you, you joined yourself in twenty twelve. And since then, they've they've been in five uh, Premiership finals, winning two of them. And of course, you've the European Champions Cup win from last season. Um, the the strike, strike me as a club like this, really do it the right way. You know, there, there was no sugar daddy for Exeter. There was no no uh, um, uh, big tycoon um, look, looking for looking for for a hobby. You know, it was just all hard work and a, a real connection with the community there in in, in Exeter. Um, yeah. uh, I think you're right. It's it's it's. Well, when start certainly when I first joined, there's still sort of like an old fashioned element to it, you know. We play hard, you know, off the pitch, enjoy yourself that way, you know. And like you said, it's you know rooted in the community, really. Like you know, it's big area, the southwest England, really. Like you know, and big rugby playing area. So really, you know, to have not had a club in the top league before Exeter was was quite amazing, really. Like given the amount of you know people playing rugby there is down there, like so, I think you know once Exeter started to do well, you know the southwest really got behind behind us, and um, I just jumped on the bandwagon, really. Like it was all sort of in place before I. <laughs> I was just lucky that I, you know, got to get up in the podiums there with the rest of the lads, like you know, and. Um, you're you're being a bit mo- modest now, Ian. Come on. You know, you've been you've been with the club for 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 nine years, and you know you've been central part in the, in a, all their all their success. Um, the pinnacle, I guess, was um, the the Champions Cup win la- last season o- over um, r- r- racing. Um, great great final and fantastic performance from your guys. You you lost unfortunately to our guys. Um, your your thoughts on the game and where it was won and lost. Uh, it's a tough one. It's very disappointing for us. Um, I think you know we had a good opportunity. If you're ever going to beat Leinster, you you home quarter final against them. You know, um, off the back of a brilliant year last year. You know, we'd played them a couple of times already in previous Heineken Cup campaigns, and uh, I think we thought this time it could be different. Like, but. You know, it's the same story really as the other games with, with good bits of play um, like it went 14 nil ahead um, but they're, they're you know they're, they're a good team and they know what they're doing and they do the basics really well 
and I think as well, you know, they, they have a good game plan for all the big games they play, and the, the, you know they always execute it. And you know, there's areas where we we'll fell ourselves that we we'll probably slipped off a wee bit. Um, and like you say, the very clinical performance by Leinster. You know, the, the set pace tries to scored, and you know, once they got in the twenty-two, they, they tended to get points. Like so, made it very difficult for ourselves. We still yeah. think we can beat Leinster, mind, but <laughs> just not this year. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Ian. You said, yeah, you said there. You still, you still think you could, you could beat them. But I was wondering, like, based on form and how they were going, and maybe how. They're playing maybe a lot better than they would than Leinster would have done back in whenever the last year's quarterfinals were when when Leinster lost to Saracens and that was when you guys were at your peak and maybe this year Leinster looked to have taken a step up whereas maybe Exeter aren't having the dominance in the Premiership that they're having this year going into the to the Le- to the Leinster game on the weekend and maybe based on how the form the form book might have been a little bit different like were you guys were you confident were you a little bit skeptical like what did you consider yourselves as favorites going into the game as isn't in a home quarter final uh it's hard to know uh i wouldn't wouldn't have said we would, would have built ourselves up as favorites or anything like that but um i i think we thought that we're it's been a strange year obviously you know with the autumn nations cup and we've have hardly had our internationals play for us at all um there hasn't been a great there wasn't a great break between seasons so sort of you know battling through in the league a wee bit and i think we thought you know we're, we're sort of getting the lads back and would sort of freshen ourselves up for the heineken cup you know even though like you say it hasn't been as good a year so far as um in previous seasons i think we thought you know would freshen ourselves up um but like you know hiding cup games especially we get to the latter stages against the big clubs i mean small margins um like we're probably you know they did the basics better than us on the day and no oh, without um uh, any any suggestions quite questioning the integrity of the, of the referee um a lot of a lot of people commented on uh the interpretations of of monsieur Reynal. Um, and and how he officiated the game and possibly letting it a bit more go at at the breakdown. Um, how do, how does this um, affect the player? Or do, does 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 it, when when you're used to a certain style of refereeing, certain certain inter- interpretations, and then you come up against a referee? Um, do 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 you, do you struggle as as players as a group of players? You- well, we've talked about it Europe before. Um, how some of the refereeing can be different to the way English referees uh, ref it, particularly around the breakdown, like you say. And uh, we've talked about trying to adapt to that. Um, obviously, breakdown is a big focus for us in Europe anyway, because, like you say, different interpretations, French referees, uh, Irish referees you can get as well. And, um, it's... It, it's not an easy. It's not an easy thing to you can't. It's not an easy thing to fl- to flick between. You know, there's something yeah. that you would get penalties for in, in in the Premiership that you know are let go in in Europe. So you just have to have a massive focus on. You can't be relying on the referee. You go try and take him out of the game as much as possible. Uh, shot to the head, and any time you see a big hit, like because it was a big hit. Um, go anywhere near the head you think to yourself trouble trouble yeah mm-hmm. exactly so i think we're all just holding our breath going you know anything could happen here i mean this could be anything i mean and i think we've talked about it as well it's not going to change so they've decided mm-hmm. that this is what they're going to ref and that's not going to change so it's up to us now to get our tackle heights down because if we don't Get her tackle heights down. Like I mean, that's probably a 50-50 call there for Johnny on the weekend. Do you know what I mean? And are you are you happy? So he with probably that? he doesn't he probably doesn't mean to hit him that high. You know. No, he's yeah, a, of course. He's a big lad. He's a, you know he's ne- nearly seven foot. Johnny Hill, you know, on a smaller guy, it's hard for him to get down anyway. But he has to do it now because if he doesn't do it, he's going to run the risk every week of, you know, being in trouble. And I think like it's 
the referees have decided this, whether you like it or not. They've decided this, and as players now, we've got to change because if we don't change, we could be off. Brilliant talking to you tonight, Ian. Um, your your thoughts on the remaining of the season and your own personal future? <laughs> on the remaining of the season, well, it's it's easy for us now. We're going to try and win the Premiership. Um, like you say, we're not in a stronger position in the league as we would have been in the last couple of years. So the last sort of seven Prem games. You know, we'll have to go well uh, and yeah. hopefully um, get into the latter rounds of that and have a bit more success than we did there in the weekend. Um, absolutely, absolutely. For me personally, well, I am 33 years old now, so I'm, I'm on the verge of going over the hill. So I have to keep my head down and try and, you know, make the most of uh, I have a couple of years left in my contract. So it'll be about making the most of that and, and enjoying you know, the last couple of years in pro rugby and, and trying to maybe play Leinster again someday. That'd be that'd be a good one before before our time. Yeah. 